Yo, it's Guido coming at you with a tactics talk and a replay review. What is going on with this? The old spit guard. All right. Anywho, <laughs> the spit guard. It was all wackadoodle. It was wackadoodle. Hello. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah, doing well. Doing well. Today we have eighth hussers. Eight hussers in his RU251. Sent me a note and said, how could I have closed this out better? Well, that's a great question. We're going to take a look at it, and I want between you and you good folk out there in internet land, we're going to come up with some good ideas for 8th Hussars and his RU251. And at some point, this thing is actually going to go backwards and do what I'm asking it to do. Okay. This is a struggle, my friends. I hope your day is going better than my struggle to make this video. That's all I have to say. He started out with saying he thought he was in his PTA. They kind of look the same, actually. This is a, a pretty decent medium-esque light tank, although it had zero armor. So a PTA is a, a pretty good analog, even though it's obviously a scout. He's got it two marks, so he knows what he's doing in this thing. It says, uh, get aggressive. should he get aggressive instead of playing for safer engagement distances? Should he flex around? He was concerned about getting lit in the open and the absence of initial cap pressure. And then the obvious ambush at the end, we'll talk about that. Uh, Sid says he doesn't recognize what happened at the cap later. All right. Then he has a great actual uh, suggestion for me. Maybe as a bonus to Pilgrim's 500 gold or make it, so, it its own contest as a giveaway a free replay review. That's not bad. I've done that on occasion in the past, meaning a dedicated replay. So if you want me to no kid and do it, I obviously will take all of your submissions and then I go through them and find out the ones that I want to do so I don't get to everything that people send but as part of a contest to no kidding make sure I do that replay review that's not a bad idea a Tussers. I like that so we are here on Himmel's Westfield Dorf spawned into the Northeast and we're gonna get going all right this this map is very interesting for a light tank in most mediums, I'll actually go up top and help the heavies fight up there. I just find that the northwest part of the map is the most important. But rarely will I do it in a scout. Sometimes I do go up there in a scout just to be obtuse. But I really think most people agree that this is probably the best initial position. You really don't want the enemy team just to come down here into this corner, own it, and start working their way back into you through the city. So. Not a bad idea to come in here. And generally, you're going to find your light tanks doing this and maybe some mediums. My problem with this position, in general, is that it usually is quite stagnant. And it can become something of a face-punching situation right here where you lose a lot of hit points. So it's, it's really difficult to use a light tank, especially if the enemy team does their light tanking correctly. Which is basically what's going on here. We've got the 1390 kind of lit up the T49. An old T49 there lost all his hit points. We get lit in here, getting a little over aggressive, eat a shot. So that's probably a shot based on your light that you shouldn't have taken. There was real no, really no reason to push in there. I would say just trying to make sure you got a shot, which you didn't get anyway. So watch out for those over aggressive hit point losing moves, especially early in the game. So that's going to hurt them. We're down, what, 200, uh, 326 hit points right off the bat. Now, when we go through this, I have a number of new people to the channel. When I'm giving these suggestions and talking about this, it is not certainly not a situation of me saying, I would have done that perfectly, and you're an idiot. That's not it at all. We're gonna, we look at each engagement, and we try to figure out some of the things that could make that engagement better, or overall stuff that we're doing in the team. So that's a great example of it right there. Had he processed better that he was lit, and they saw him and he realized that there were three or four guys there and I think he had all the SA he needed for that. I probably wouldn't have lost the 300 hit points right there. Here's another situation where we're gonna spend a considerable amount of time shooting APCR at the turret of the Skoda. We bounced twice and that's the third bounce. I think after the first one, I would have gone to heat on this one and definitely after the second one, I would have gone to heat. Also, you tend to zoom in at about this zoom level, which I don't know times four I actually have it set to where I can come in here and get a little bit more fine-tuned on what I'm aiming at I think there's an argument for both of them in there some people use both some people do it the way you do it I just throw that out you might get a little bit better aim in 
if you zoom, there you go. So we've zoomed in a little bit more. So it looks like you've got it. That goes at least to times eight that we're seeing right there. And now we've gone to the heat and we're starting to punch through the Skoda. So let's talk about that for a second. In terms of the overall game and in terms of your ammo, in terms of time, right, you only have so much time in this game to get rid of the enemy hit points. And meanwhile, they're trying to take down your hit points. And the slower we take their hit points, the more opportunity we give them to take our hit points, provided they're obviously doing all the right things. So I said this corner gets a, big, a bit stagnant, and this is kind of why. Everybody's sort of hiding. You can see 8th Hussars guys are hiding out on this knoll, this little promontory here, as is the purple team, teams down here in the south. Very typical. You get some lights and mediums fighting right in the corner, and then you got the sniper Reno sitting back there. Meanwhile, the big punchy face thing is going on up in the northwest, and we only have so much time, right? So you have to be cognizant of that. Now, you want to get rid of them as fast as you can while maintaining as many of your hit points as possible, and sometimes those two things are at odds with each other, right? Because you got to take some chances to get rid of their hit points. I think maybe I'd have come around this corner a little sooner there, 8th Hussars, because you'd like to really drive off that 1390. And it looks like you noticed he bailed out of there and went down the hill, which is why we came around the corner. I think you probably could have done that a little earlier and maybe killed the 1390. I mention this because what we're trying to do is debrief to the best solution that we can come up with, and that 1390 is going to become a problem later, and it would have been nice to have killed him off. Gee, sore. I don't know how that shot hit, but good on you. you <laughs> I mean, holy cow. This is nice right here. We shut down the T-50. All right, so let's take a quick look at what's going on and make a bit of an assessment. Nothing good is happening up there in the northwest. That's a problem. You've, you've beat pretty much everyone they had down the south. So you have an advantage in the south. You have a big disadvantage in the north. And the disadvantage in the north is only going to get worse. And this is usually a recipe for a loss. Which is, once again, why I'm not a huge fan of going to this corner and sort of playing sniper games. If I can get down there and get the enemy team killed fast and then move back into the middle, maybe into their backfield, especially if there's already and kill a couple of them. But right now, it's not really a great... It's not really a great time to push into their backfield. You notice your 430 keeps on YOLOing in. He's chasing down the G-SOR, G spit it out, right now, but we'll, we'll watch what he does later on. This is the part where you didn't want to get caught out in the open. This tank is somewhat ammo limited, especially if you get in a sniper situation like we're about to see here where he continues to just spit rounds down range and has all kinds of opportunities for damage. The problem is it's a light tank, and while the gun is decent, it's not really that great in a tier 9 and 10 battle, especially when you're talking about some of these guys and the amount of armor they have. I think he's holding these shots right here because it's just not a very high likelihood of penning. So... Not not a bad plan right there. If you had a bunch more heat, maybe try a couple of them, but you're going to have a hard time at that range hitting what you want to hit. So we're going to start moving around. And from here, it's for the middle part of the game right here, it is a lot about shot selection and a little bit about positioning. You notice that the 430 is busy lighting guys up there. I'm not in love with this position. It's not great right there, but maybe go over there and start helping them, which I think you start to do. And then we have the 1390. And it would be really great to make this shot. You did mention in your write-up to me that, you know, obviously had a lot of misses. Some of it can be attributed to something like that where there just wasn't enough lead fire. And then, of course, dispersion takes over from there. Some of it is just the ranges and the dispersion itself, the, the vagaries of this game. You know, just stuff happens, essentially. This is nice here because we catch him going sideways. Not a lot of lead fire there, but it's got a high-velocity shell, so we hit that guy pretty well. A little bit better on the lead fire. Bit of a kind of jerking action right there, so to speak. This is unfortunate. It doesn't kill this guy. It just goes way too high. All right. The other part about this part of the battle I want to talk about is just make sure you're kind of looking around for shots and where you've got good shots and bad shots. And look for guys that are closer as well. This 780 is right on the edge of your circle. So the possibility of getting lit by him is, is fairly close. And just come up for air. It was another video I did a while ago. Just kind of zoom out and look around. It, this thing does reload fast, so you are bam, bam, bam. But every once in a while, look for a better shot. We get a little bit into the soda straw right here. Yeah, just looking. I like this. You're looking for that good shot. Try to get it while he is a little bit sideways. That Conqueror did sort of stick his rear end up while you were aiming in on the other, other tank. I think you may have had an opportunity there, but that's really some very uh, 
fine hairs that I'm splitting right there. So we take some shots. The ST1, we've only got two heat shells. We got 11 APCR. The 430 goes in. He's fighting the CC-1 Mark II in this little slot canyon right there. And you're not in a position to help him. We'd have to go all the way down and around to do that. And pretty quickly, your team's going to start folding here. It's 8 to 10. Not the impossible dream, but it's not looking great. Down goes our 430, which is probably the best tank you had left. He lost a bunch of hit points to that guy. And look what he's fighting. We've got an IS-7, an Object 780, a 4005. From here, from my standpoint, it is time to just start trying to get as much damage out of this thing as you can. And if things start to go well, maybe your team makes a bit of a comeback. Maybe we can turn it into more of a, we might win this. That's a good start. The WT nukes that dude. But there's a lot of hit points left on the enemy team. I look at the 4005 apparently has some, although we may not have good SA on those guys because the 4005 and the Sturve have never really been in your draw distance. Case in point, the Sturve only had, what, 300, 400 hit points left. I like this for weight. Oh, oh, oh. I might have waited. He seemed to be kind of turning around back and forth, and I think he was worried about the T-49, so he may have... He did, actually, but he may have continued... Yeah, so you had a side shot on that guy. I like that. It'd be nice if we could close out this. There goes the Sturve. He puts his armor right to you. The shot goes low anyway. Didn't work out. I think in this case... You know it's a ST1. Let's go ahead and press number two and get the heat rolling on this guy. This is a bummer. And then we change our minds, but we take a nice chunk off of the 4005. I think I shoot at the ST1 and try to get into his top, right? Take that shot straight down on him and maybe close him out right there. So possible mistake on shot selection. And all of a sudden, where did everybody go? Well, that's it. We got uh, eighth Hussars and his RU-251. And I think specifically his question was, what do I do from here to close this thing out? Because he gets a little closer than you might think. Notice that the sh the hit points are showing him at plus 456. Look how low all the known hit points are on the tanks that are left. So he's actually not really completely out of this. If he can pick two or three, four of them off, we're in really good shape on this one. So he's going to head off this way. I like this. Let's go ahead and build some separation. That's what a light tank wants to do. Trying to make a big comeback like this. Build some separation, let the vision do its work. He is at a bit of a negative in terms of the 1390. Obviously there's a lot more guns out there than he has. That's a big problem. He does have more hit points, but he can't take multiple hits from these guys. A 4005 will end them pretty much. And then the 1390 is, is a similar spotting capability depending on how it's set up, but it's another scout. That's what I was talking about earlier when it been, would have been really nice and what that does if he had killed the 1390 is it opens up more possibilities for his vision games. Right now, as he maneuvers and moves around, he has to be thinking about the 1390. And there are some places he may or may not go based on the 1390 being around. And he can probably be a little more aggressive if he was dealing with some of the others. Now this surprised me a little bit. I don't know if you noticed the guy was there or didn't notice the guy was there or decided that you wanted to keep moving up and get a little further away. So let's see what he does. Maybe he's actually trying to get this dude to the edge of the spotting circle. Now he's looking. So 8th Hustlers will have to tell us in the comments down there if it was in fact true that he saw it and he was just headed up here to get behind a bush to kill him. Not a bad idea. My concern would have been he gets away, he dives down or he backs up or somehow I don't have a shot. I, I really want to close him out, but he takes a chance here, and it works out beautifully for him. The guy's trying to get back. Look, he's right outside of the spotting ring. Takes the shot, got a bush or two in between, and kills the dude, and doesn't get spotted. So that is some great... Whether that was by uh, on purpose or by accident, doesn't matter in terms of how it worked out for him, but it will be interesting to see what he says in the comments. Because if that's what he was doing, good on him. I would have been very much enticed to slam the brakes on and kill him right there even if I got spotted and the bummer there would be if you missed or bounced now he's got a shot on you so nicely done we do futz around a little bit here up on this hill this is a great position by the way guys to kind of hold it for a little while this tank is fast enough to get back to cap if they jump on although it will be a little dicey if all three get on or all four or if they set up an ambush put two on and then have a couple guys on the edge it really depends on the 
the various capabilities of the other team and how, how much teamwork they're doing. A lot of times at this part of the game, especially at upper tiers, there is a little bit of chatter in the chat about what's going on and where people are going more likely than early in games or at lower tiers so you can get a little bit of teamwork moving here i like this position up here though because it can see for a long distance both to the south and over to the east and catch guys if they're coming at you the only thing you can't really see other than a couple times you went over the edge there is what's going on in the city and if someone's going to approach if you think a guy's trolling around up here going through the city is one of your best bets because you got some buildings to stop him from maybe sniping you from and maybe you sneak up and at least get up to the back edge of this hill right here and kind of pop up and find the guy what you don't want to do is just kind of drone through the middle here or drone through the middle here the edges of the map will work on both sides as well there's some cover for approaching somebody who might be doing what eighth hussars is doing right there now they don't need to go looking for him necessarily then again they have a scout and this is where the scout's going to come in to play for them if you'd have been able to have that guy dead a little bit earlier maybe a little more aggressive down in the corner in the southeast we may not have had this situation happen as he gets in here he gets spotted so no surprise the light tank is down on one of these bushes down here watching for him i would not doubt i would not be surprised if somebody else was up over here watching for him to come from the south there we get a bit lucky here kind of zinging on in we take a hit from the 1390 he tracks us and then we get a bounce and then we find the 1390 goofing around 1390 gets stuck on the rocks and he ends up killing the guy and then there's a is7 right there so we have one he round two apcr and four he rounds and frankly i don't know if it is enough alpha and damage potential in there it is only just I, we know we can take out the ST or the IS-7 with one shot. We should be able to take out the ST-1 with one shot. That leaves us one of either a Heat or an APCR, and then the rest of it HE to take down the other guy. And they all look like they're about 100 to 200 hit points. So very, very close. When you start talking about misses or bounces, it goes pretty far south at that point. Now, they know their scout's dead. Their IS-7 is backed up. Watch what they do. A Tussers thinks he's got time. He's got 45 seconds. So he comes in here. Hey, can I maybe find a guy being stupid? No, didn't see him. All right, so I'll just come over here. No, I'm not seeing that. Okay, let's just kind of spin around and just watch what happens to the timer. Oops. So we were at 36 and somebody just jumped on. And all of a sudden, what looked like a fairly easy, kind of relaxed situation. Yeah, it was getting close, but I have some time. It becomes, I got no time. And now we have the question, do I stay with the gold round heat or do I go to HE and look for some kind of reset action, even though it is not much in terms of HE, especially against some of the armor of those guys. And I don't know if 8th Hussars realized that a second guy had gone on because this was a really wide line to take, in my opinion, if you're worried about getting in there because holy cow, we're at 8 seconds, 7 seconds, 6 seconds. And the good news for 8th Hussars is he actually gets here in time. Oh, we found him. There he is. Two seconds. We've got the heat round. Let's see how it goes. It's an ST1. Aim on in. And we don't have a lot of time. we got to kill him. No. <laughs> oh, that is rough. 3,471 damage. 1,603 assists. Three kills and almost pulling off the... Co is it Koblenovs? The stand against five people and i don't know if it's almost there's three guys but he was certainly on his way or working towards that kind of epic metal right there really nice job so my answer uh to the question of what could i have done to close it out starts at the beginning goes through a lot of the things that we talked about maybe a few a little more aggressive early on to get rid of the 1390 to kind of give yourself some more options that guy popped up a couple times there were a couple times where maybe you could have been a little more aggressive, like I said, in that corner, closing it out. And then the thing I think of, the thing to think about the timing part of it that I'm discussing is if he closes out the southeast faster, that frees up the rest of his guns that are still alive quicker to go do other things. So it really is all tied in together. You all right there, Mocha? Take it easy. All tied in together. And then we talked about the mid part. Just my only opinion comment on that is on a couple occasions maybe shot selection in there come up for air a couple times look around a little bit more i do the same thing there's it's targets that i'm trying to work i'm trying to shave off hit points but every once in a while I'll zoom out and go all right what's going on 
Do I have a better option? Do I need to be somewhere else? That kind of thing. And then end game, we discussed how you handled the rest of that. And I thought it was pretty good. And then the stupid 1390 reared his ugly head yet again, because without him there, you probably get a lot closer to them uh, before they see you and may have some options to jump on guys. There you go. That's my opinion on what turned out to be a fantastic game anyway. Nicely done. You guys all pile in down there in the comments. Keep it civil. Constructive criticism and such. That's all I've got for today. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. We will see ya. Yo, I'm back. I was about to edit this thing and it reali I realized, it realized, somebody realized that I wanted to talk a little bit about the approach on this and how I might approach this cap as the enemy's trying to cap it here. Light tank wise. I think it was a little bit dangerous to zing right across the middle right here. So you have a couple options. One is to go into the town and sneak through the town right here. My expectations for the enemy team would be the light tank somewhere along this ridge. All right. And one of these bushes waiting to see me come directly in where I am right now, or at least catch me as I come out of the bushes to the left over here, which we'll talk about in a minute. I would expect somebody potentially over here at about E9. And again, this is if they're even semi-organized, all right? Up on the train viaduct thing, in case I came from the south over here. And then somebody maybe in the bushes back here in the tree line. Now, it looks like at least one guy in cap. And probably another dude maybe on this back edge on the A or B row over here. Back edge kind of looking at me. Now, that's fairly organized kind of group. There's a lot of places here for people to hide to ambush you. But you are coming from the high ground. That's a good thing. What I need to do, though, however I approach it, is minimize being out in the open and letting any of these guys in the bushes here see me any earlier than they need to be. So that is either go through the town. We're not going to talk about the south. There is a south approach, obviously, but that's not where we are. Or if I'm going to come the way you came, I think I go all the way around into these bushes here. Let's see if I can get the fly thing going here. So over here, come all the way around this way, and then I work my way around this edge, and I try to get into these bushes over here. And based on the way these bushes are set up, it is possible, as you're coming in here, to kind of sneak over to this one, sneak into this one, potentially sneak up to this one, or at least get to here so I can look around. So let's see what happens. We kind of cruise right along the edge and this is you know what I'm really talking about let's not go right across there let's come up this way along the edge of these rocks here and we're lit right so we got lit down in here and I think we really could have avoided that if we had come around this way now I don't know maybe as you go up right here you get lit in about the same spot because he's in this bush right here possibly but I would avoid just zinging across the open right there that's that's just what I wanted to say there. The other option, again, is the come down through the town, and that gives you some bailout options if you do get spotted just 90 right and head back behind the buildings and use them as a bit of cover. But you might sneak in here and find a guy if he's posted up, or even look across here and find the guys on the back edge there as well. So just a couple possibilities and things to think about. Now we're really done. See ya.